Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship on this hot, hot, hot summer feeling day, even though it's still springtime, right? We're still in the spring, but at least we get to be here together getting a little cool breeze and also just having the relief of being able to worship together. Whether we're here in this space, whether we're watching at home, it's good to be together. Amen. And a happy Father's Day to all those who are fathers, about to be fathers, feel like fathers, fatherly. So if you want to, just turn to a father near you. Just give him a wave. Be like, you're awesome. Way to be. Happy Father's Day. And there's not much to announce in terms of things that are happening this week. Council will meet on Tuesday. There will be Bible study at 10 a.m. on Monday. So if you haven't uh, been able to attend Bible study yet, now is the time to be able to come on in. We're still continuing throughout the summertime, and it's a lot of fun. Um, Other than that, are there announcements from the assembly that should be raised up? All right. So with that, we'll take a moment to center our hearts and then we'll rise in order to join in singing. My soul cries out with a joyful shout that the God of my heart is great, and my spirit sings of the wondrous things that the bring to the one to wait. Who fixed your sight on the servant fight, and my weakness you did not serve. So from east to west shall my name be blessed, could the world be about to turn. The heart shall sing of the unity you bring, let the parts of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near to the world is about to turn. Wipe away all tears for 
for the dead draws near, and the world is about to turn. Though the nations rage from age to age, we remember who holds us fast. God's mercy must deliver us from the conqueror's rushing grass. The saving word that was promised for is the promise which holds us bound. Till the spear and rod can be crushed by God, who is turning the world around. I shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. Let us join in praying together. O Lord God, we bring before you the cries of a sorrowing world. In your mercy, set us free from the chains that bind us and defend us from everything that is evil. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Today's first reading comes from 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 1 through 15. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So may the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life like the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Then he was afraid. He got up and fled for his life, and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah. He left his servant there, but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly, an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him, and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the mount of God. At that place he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life, so take it away. 
He said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the ent entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. But the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. Word of God, word of life. Be to God. Today's psalm is Psalm 42 and 43. We'll be singing, <laughs> singing. we will be reading by whole verses. <laughs> As the deer longs for the water brooks, so longs my soul for you, O God. My tears have been my food day and night, while all day long they say to me, Where now is your God? Why are you so full of heaviness, O oh my soul, and why are you so disquieted within me? Put your trust in God, for I will yet give thanks to the one who is my help and my God. One deep calls to another in the roar of your cascades. All your rapids and floods have gone over me. I will say to the God of my strength, Why have you rejected me? And why do I wander in such gloom while the enemy oppresses me? Why are you so full of heaviness, O oh my soul, and why are you so disquieted within me? Put your trust in God, for I will yet give thanks to the one who is my help and my God. For you are the God of my strength. Why have you rejected me? And why do I wander in such gloom while the enemy oppresses me? That I may go to the altar of God, to the God of my joy and gladness, and on the harp I will give thanks to you, O God, my God. Today's second reading is from the book of Galatians, chapter 3, verses 23 through 29. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus, we are all children of God through faith. As many of you are baptized into Christ, have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. 
or Greek. There is no longer a slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Jesus Christ. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's, Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. Word of God, word of life. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus and his disciples arrived at the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. And when Jesus stepped out onto land, a man from the city who had demons met him. Now for a long time he had worn no clothing and he did not live in a house, but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man, for many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Then Jesus asked him, what's your name? And he answered, Legion, for many demons had entered him. And the demons begged him that he might not order them back into the abyss. Now there on the hillside, a large herd of swine were feeding, so the demons begged Jesus that they might be able to enter these. So Jesus gave them permission. And the demons came out from the man and entered the swine. And the herd raced down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. When the swine herds saw it, they ran and told it in the city and in the country then the people came out to see what had happened. And when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it had told them how the one who had been possessed had been healed. And then... All the people of the surrounding countryside of the Gerasenes asked for Jesus to leave them because they were seized with great fear. So Jesus got in a boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged Jesus that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So the man went, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. And if you are a child and would like to come forward for a children's message, now is the time.
I don't want to take your seat, so wherever you want to sit, then I'll arrange. Oh, how are we doing, friends? Good? Have you been enjoying the sunshine out there? Yeah. <laughs> can see it. There's, so, there's such a glow to you today because of that sunshine. It's beautiful. So I brought some friends with me from my house today, and because, you know, friends can get a little rambunctious in the car, I decided to put them into some different locked items, like here in my purse, nice and safe, and here in this bag, nice and safe, and here in this cage, nice and safe. But the problem is, I don't know how to get them back out again. Like, I tried this, I've, I've tried the lock, I've tried this lock, and I just, I'm at a loss. I have no clue um, how I can get them out again. I was wondering if you could help me. Um, I, this needs a combination. Um, I, I don't know it. Do you, do you know the, the combination? Or, oh, there's a com on the back of it. I see. Okay. Can you, can you read the combination off to me? 25? Mm, 25? 39. Okay. 17. 17. Let's see. <gasps> yeah! Awesome! That's how combination locks work. <laughs> Come out, friend. Ah, okay, we got one friend down. Larry the Cucumber. <laughs> okay, so we have one friend. Um, what should we do about these two things? Like, how... How can we? Um, well, I thought I had a key somewhere, but maybe I locked it in the, the purse. Oh, I don't know if I locked it in the purse with it. I'm okay, um, you're going to be okay, buddy. We'll get you in a second. Maybe if we tried this one, what do you think? Hmm, pushing up and... Oh, okay, you had to push and pull the thing. I see. Oh, look at there's my friend. And oh, I think oh, there's a key in there too. Okay, do you think that that would open that lock? Do you want to give it a try? I'm sorry that I locked you in there, buddy. I bet that was kind of scary. Did that do it? Yeah! Yes! Sweet! And then we have our final friend right there. Little twerpy guy just kind of hanging out. All right. Thanks for helping me to set them free. I can't believe that I locked them in there without realizing that I couldn't get them back out again. So this kind of reminds me a little bit of the gospel story that we heard. Um, I don't know if it reminds you a little bit, but there was a man in that story that kind of wasn't free, was he? Yeah, he was possessed by a great multitude of demons. And what did the people do to try to keep him home? Do you remember? He was bound with chains and shackles. And was he left alone or was there someone with him? Yeah, there was a guard kept watch over him to try to make him stay put, kind of like what I was doing with my creatures. But he was able to get himself out of those. <sighs> But he was still trapped by those demons. So he still needed to be set free like you guys were able to set my friends free here. So you know who stepped in? Yeah, Jesus stepped in to set the man free from those demons so that he could live again as a free person. So that's a pretty amazing gift that God gives is freedom for us, freedom in a lot of different circumstances. So let's pray for that today. We can give thanks for that gift of freedom, but then also pray for those who need to be free, okay? So let's get our hands ready. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks that you are one that sets free, that you look on our bondage and you don't want us to stay there, but you want to free us from that. We ask that all those who are bound today might be set free from their burdens, from their chains, from their ailments, from all the ways that they are bound, Lord God, so they can walk again as free people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for helping. And I do have candy. I just left it in the pew. Hold on.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A friend of mine has been asking for my advice lately concerning a friend of his that has been struggling with their faith. This friend has said, how can I believe in God when God never really seems to answer my prayers in the way that I, got, I want God to? And I'll be honest, I've kind of been struggling with what to say for my friend to say to his friend, because a lot of what we grasp by faith is still mysterious. It's not fully known. It's not fully like out there in the world to find. So if he's looking for tangible empirical proof, such as God answering prayers exactly how he wants, it's hard to know how do I guide him into seeing what he doesn't really want to see. It's hard. And I've found that this 
question posed by the friend of my friend had followed me into my sermon preparation for this week because the detail that stuck out to me most in this story, this time reading it through, was that several times Jesus is asked for something in this lesson, and several times Jesus responds. Twice he responds with yes, and once he responds with no. But what's interesting is that the time that he says no seems to be the time that he definitely should have said yes. Did you notice that? When the demons ask Jesus if they can enter into the herd of swine, Jesus said, go right ahead. When the people ask Jesus if he would leave them because they're freaked out by what he just did, Jesus says, all right, gets in the boat. But when the man who just experienced a miracle at the hand of Jesus, this man who had been bound by physical bounds and by demons, and he has been separated from his home for so long and the people that knew and loved him, when this man, who's clothed and in his right mind for the first time and who knows how long, when he makes a simple request of Jesus, let me come with you. Let me be with you. Jesus tells him, no. He doesn't say it verbatim, but sending him away when he wants nothing more than to go with him is a pretty clear no if I've ever seen one before. And it's surprising and shocking. Like, I know we know the end of this story, but really, why is he the one that gets the no from Jesus? Right? Like, He just got his life back because of you. He wants to give his life to you, to follow you, to be your disciple. Why are you saying no to him? Especially after you just said yes to the people that want you out of their country. And especially when you just said yes to a bunch of demons. Why? Why? And as I was thinking about this more, the question of the friend of my friend, I've started to feel some empathy for it because really if we're thinking about how that would have felt for the man who had just been set free from these demons i think that jesus response at least a little bit probably would have hurt like is there something still wrong with me that you don't want me with you is there a remnant of my past that is holding me here away from you And we don't just need to look in the details of the story. I think each of us probably has had experiences of times when we've asked for things from God, either personally or for the sake of others, and found that the answer and response was no, and then hurt by that. I know that I've had that experience, especially praying for people in some really tender circumstances, people that I cared for a lot, and to have a no in response to those things was was really hard and can be really hard to deal with because none of us want to hear no from God, right? We don't ask for things anticipating for God to say no If we anticipate a no, usually we make sure to not ask that of God in the first place. But when we ask God for things in prayer, usually we're looking for yes. We're looking for yes. And so no can feel pretty hard. But even while it can feel hard to receive a no from God, I think that our story for today shows us that perhaps no is not always a bad answer to our prayers. And I say not always, not in the sense that God can give bad answers to our prayers, because God knows more than we do, and I believe firmly like God will answer prayers as they are meant to be answered, but I say not always, because sometimes it'll still hurt. Right? What I'm about to say isn't going to make every no from here on out or every no that's happened in the past suddenly feel better or have absolute clarity with uh, God's insights and heart revealed to us. I'm making no promises of that. But I think our scripture still shows us that sometimes no 
can lead somewhere else than pain. Sometimes no can reveal to us the yes that God has in store for our good and for the good of those who are around us. Look where the no leads the man who had just been released from all these demons. When Jesus says, no, you can't come with me, he gives him a different location to go to. He says, return to your home, which is no small thing for this man. Home is the place where the demons never let him stay very long, even when the people tried to keep him there with chains and shackles and a guard posted to watch over him. Home is the place where his relatives, his friends are, people that have been waiting for him to come back and stay with them for so long. Home is a place with four walls and a roof over your head and a place for your stuff and a bed and completely different from the open air cemetery that this man has been spending all of his time in. Home is something that he has been deprived of for so long. And if Jesus would have said yes to this man following him, this man would have maybe never had the chance to experience what it's like to be home again. Because Jesus and his disciples were always moving always going to different places to declare the kingdom of God. So for Jesus to tell this man, return to your home, he's giving him the chance to live as a free man again, to live among his loved ones again, to know what it's like to have the love, safety, and security that home provides again. It's not what the man asked for, but isn't that what that man needed? Isn't that what he needed? And what's more, when Jesus sends him to his home, he gives him a purpose. He says to him, declare all that God has done for you, which might not seem that important. Why is that important? Well, why is Jesus leaving in the first place? because the people were scared of him. They saw what he had done, and they were completely freaked out and didn't know what to do about it. So Jesus sends this man to go to his hometown and tell people his story, to let them know what God has been up to in his life, so maybe sometime that fear could change into something else. Maybe wonder or ah, or a desire to really know this Jesus. Who is he? What is he capable of? And that, I think, shows that in a sense, by sending this man to stay home, Jesus is putting him in the place to be the response of the prayer expressed by his community. And I don't know how often we think of that, that God might say no to us in order for us to be able to respond to prayers that are spoken by other people. And if we look throughout the scriptures, we find that that's very common, that more often than sending angels or more often than speaking through burning bushes or even having mountaintop encounters like we saw with Elijah and 1 Kings, God will send people to carry out God's will, to answer prayer through their lived existence. And I know I'm making a case for why God's saying no to us isn't always a bad thing, but one last thing to bring up is that this man could have chosen to not live into any of this that Jesus told him to do. He could have instead heard the no to what he wanted and chosen to be bitter to walk away carrying that woundedness, that sense of rejection that he might have felt, or like the friend of my friend, allow that no to become a hindrance in his faith, to feel like, how can I trust God again after this? But the man chooses to see the no of Jesus and receive the yes that was on the other side of it. Yes, 
for his well-being, and yes, for the well-being of his community. And even while we don't get a chance to see how this panned out, when the man does go home and proclaims to all in the city all that Jesus had done for him, I think it ended up with blessing for all of them. All of that from God's no. So we don't need to be dismayed or caught off when God says no to us. Because sometimes no can lead to an even greater yes. In Jesus' name, amen. So my soul longs after you. You alone are my heart's desire to die long to worship you. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit. Please stand as you are able, and let us join in confessing our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the Church the creation, and all who are in need. Holy God, you hear the cries of those who seek you. Equip your church with evangelists who reveal the continuous call of your outstretched hands and your promises of a home in you. God of grace, hear our prayer. You hear the cries of the earth, Restore places where land, air, and waterways have been harmed. Guide us to develop and implement sources of energy and food production that do not destroy the earth. God of grace, hear our prayer. You hear the cries of those who are marginalized or cast out. On this Juneteenth observance, guide us continually toward the end of oppression in all its forms, especially white supremacy. Bring true freedom and human flourishing to all your beloved children. God of grace, hear our prayer. You hear the cries of those who suffer. Come to the aid of all who are homeless, naked, hungry, or sick, especially Willis Grokow, Don and Shirley Vansicle, Brandon and David Miney, Billy Satry, Brooks Hansen, Elise Davey, Landon Labine, Connie Traska, and those we name before you in the silence of our hearts. Bring peace to any experiencing mental illness, that they can clearly recognize your loving presence. 
God of grace, hear our prayer. You hear the cries of those who celebrate and those who grieve on this Father's Day. Nurture mutual love and tender care in all relationships. Comfort those for whom this day brings sadness or longing. God of grace, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the faithful departed whose lives proclaimed all you have done for them. At the last, unite us with them as we make our home in you. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Please share a sign of peace with one another. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, O God, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened the way to everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts in heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In Christ's presence, there is fullness of joy. Come to the banquet. You may be seated. And because we only have one tray for wine, we're going to be serving one side at a time. So we'll start with people on this side of the sanctuary and then continue with people on this side of the sanctuary. And there are little baskets at the edge um, of each side that you can put your cups in afterward. We have wine, which is the darker colored liquid, and grape juice, which is the lighter colored. Come for all is ready. the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world.
Let us pray. Life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please stand as you are able for the blessing. The God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. Go in peace. Love your neighbor. Thanks be to God.